an important annual water heater maintenance tip up next on the Handy Guys podcast. So Brian, when I bought a house, I moved in, I had this nice new water heater, it's not that new anymore, but I found out a few years later when I had a leak at my TMP valve, my treasure, uh, temperature and pressure valve on the side and went out on the floor and I had some water on the floor, I realized that there's some basic maintenance that you're supposed to do with these water heaters. They don't tell you that. There's no, no, no homeowner's but, manual that says, oh, by the way. Well, you did get a manual <laughs> with your water heater, or yeah. somebody did, right. right? The builder may have uh, sure. lost it in the dumpster. But there's some maintenance specifically to testing this tank up here. Now, what is that tank? Basis. Let's talk about that tank and why it's important and why our grandparents and parents didn't have them. Right, so we can talk about that uh, and also talk about how easy it is to test and it doesn't take a lot of money. No, it doesn't. So here's the deal. So you have an expansion tank on modern water heaters typically because when if you, you're on city water, even if you have well water, I think, right? Well, it's gonna depend. So when you have, what, what happens is water when it heats, it builds up pressure it expands. And, it, and it expands and it needs some place to go. So in, in the olden days, this water used to either, if you're on city water, it used to go back into the city system. Right, it would just push out back push out, out through your main out. valve, right. or coming into your house and just push back that or direction. Or on a well system, it would push back down into the well. Right, but now they've put these what, anti, what do they call them? Anti-siphon valves, siphon or, valves or backflow preventers. Right, so when the water expands here, it heats up, it wants to push up out the cold water, the input, where it's coming in, it can't go yeah. anywhere on the hot side because all your valves in your house are Everything's turned off. Closed. So it's trying to go back out to the street. And you have this valve that's been put on over the last 10, 15 years. Most municipalities have put it on there for various reasons and it can't expand. And so they put these expansion valves, uh, excuse me, bladders on here, these tanks right. that have a bladder so that there's water on one side, air on the other that has pressured, uh, pressurized air. Exactly. And so yeah, you have a divider in there, air, and water. So one thing that people will have a common misconception about is that temperature and pressure relief valve can often get leaky. It'll start right. dripping. But the problem isn't really with that valve. The problem is their tank has either failed or they don't have one at all. Right, so in other words, if you don't have an expansion tank or it has failed, the water tries to push its way out. It can't get out through this into your city system. And so what happens is your temperature and pressure valve has a spring mechanism and it is designed so that this thing doesn't explode. Right. And it pushes open the valve and water comes out. Hopefully you have a tube so it doesn't shoot out sideways or, and it goes down onto the floor. I actually have a little paint canister there because for a while I was getting some water that was coming out. It wasn't a lot, but it was enough to be an annoying and you know, right, there's something right. not right. So let's talk about how we can test this expansion tank very simply. First thing you do is just get a tire pressure gauge. Yeah. Nothing fancy. This is just what you'd use on a same kind of gauge on a tire. Uh, you can get these at your local auto store or something like that for a few dollars. Right. And just stick it on there and see what it reads. And so this particular expansion tank just uh, has a cover that comes off and you have the same kind of valve that you have on a bike and you can get your, right. your reading. Now when you do that, a little bit of air comes out and yeah. that's okay. If you have water coming out, your bladder in here has failed. Right, and, and we're gonna show you shots from Brian's tank that had failed. Right. And when you put uh, something up there to test a gauge, you got yes. water just squirting water out. Water squirting out. So <laughs> I knew I definitely had a problem. Right. So I had to replace the whole tank. Okay. Most of these bladders are not replaceable. You gotta get the whole new tank. Right, and, it's, and in this case, there's, they fortunately did put a compression fitting on here so that this, you can shut off your water remove the tank and put a new one Thre in if all goes well. <laughs> well that's a that's a threaded a threaded yeah yeah, yeah. Fitting, so yeah. you can just screw it right a right. new one right in right. very easily some of them if you don't have one some of the kits you get with the new tank will come with what's called a saddle valve and you can just right. easily retrofit that into your system now the question is 
In my case, mine had failed, but it wasn't because it was a bad bladder. This has been failed for two or three years, and you noticed I still had pressurized air in there. What I did is just needed to add air. So when I put my pressure gauge up here, I got nothing. I got no air pressure. So this whole thing was pushing the bladder with water, and there was no air in here. So what I had to do was pump this thing up, essentially. Exactly. And the question is, and I, I use the compressor for uh, my air tools, to, but you could use a bike pump, whatever. Uh, simple pump, and the question is how many pounds of pressure do you exactly. put in here? How do you figure that out? Well, what you do, some of these will come pre-charged. So if you're putting a new tank on, you read the instructions and it'll tell you. The one that I just replaced came pre-charged to 36 pounds. Okay. Not enough. Right. M because what I did is I took one of these valves, you can get them at the hardware Similar store. Similar to the air valve, but it has the bigger right. fitting. Right. It's a hose connection. So you hook it up to your outside hose. You stick it on there and you watch this will go up to what your what it'll tell you your water pressure right so you get your water pressure reading so if this shows you say you're at 70 psi or something like that then you want your air pressure right to, be to match 70 psi. be close correct okay so it's fairly simple you get your water pressure then you put that amount of air pressure in your tank and you can then monitor it every month or so, make sure that air is staying in there. Once you, a year anyway. Well, right? <laughs> I mean, if, if you're concerned about it not working. Exactly. Then right. once you're, you're you know, pretty sure, then yeah, a once a year test is usually all you need. It takes no time at all. Right. And it's, again, something they don't tell you when you buy a house. But. Right. Now, what I, what some people are saying is, oh, it doesn't matter and this and that. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you have a backflow preventer. But some people are saying in a closed system like we have here, is you should actually open a hot water valve on a sink or uh, the Drink. shower yeah. so that the water is running when you add oh, okay. air here. Because when you're adding air, it doesn't have anywhere to displace that water. Okay. It's in here. Oh, right. So you're going to get an inaccurate reading, reading. for the amount of air that you're putting in there. So when you, if you're going to add air, open up a faucet or open up a shower, then add your air in so that uh, things will even out and you get the correct pressure in there. Okay, so we'll show you some scenes from Brian's repair. He actually replaced this entire tank. We'll see his fail, how it was failing. And uh, again, you know, this is each of these tools costs probably combined less than $10. Yeah. Uh, that's all you need to test your unit. You can do it. Uh, I've seen some plumbers recommend an annual check. It doesn't require a plumber to do it. You test your air. If you're not comfortable replacing this, if you think it's failed, then maybe you do need a plumber. But otherwise, that test doesn't take anything at all. No, it's so. easy peasy. All right, there you have it. Uh, thanks for uh, watching another Handy Guys podcast. Thanks. thanks.